I'm Chris White. I'm president and CEO of White Labs, co-author of the book Yeast, The Practical Guide for Fermentation with Jamil Zanishev. We wanted to write a book about yeast for home brewers and professional brewers. Uh, we wanted to talk about a, a topic that is a bit of mystery for a lot of people. Not a lot of brewers uh, come into making beer with a background in microbiology. There's a lot of uh, academic textbooks out there that cost hundreds of dollars that are excellent, but they're not necessarily written for the craft brewer. And so I wanted a book that does have science because yeast is science, but also has a easy way of digesting the material to understand what happens in a beer fermentation. When I started to write the book, uh, I started to put a lot of the information together from various other articles I've written, but it didn't read great. I had met Jamil Zanishev in California, and he was a amazing home brewer. He had won a gold medal in all of the 50 plus categories of the American Home Brewers Association. So I knew he knew something about beer styles. Those were all different styles, requiring different yeast strains, requiring great yeast handling, great pitching rates, great fermentation monitoring. So we started talking about uh, writing the book together and he's a great writer and he's a great thinker. So he really made me make the book make sense. And in the process, we became friends. We had so much fun writing this book. And after we wrote the book, he started his own brewery, Heretic Brewing Company. And it's an excellent brewery. They make awesome beers. Hopefully you get to try them someday. Yeast is one of the most critical things in beer and beer flavor. Beer is only a few ingredients, malted barley, hops, yeast, and water, and how those ingredients come together to make an excellent beer is the art and the science. You don't just mix them together and say, oh, here we go. You don't just do a boil with malted barley and hops and say, that's my beer. It's still sweet. Where's the alcohol? Where's the flavor? Where's the beer? That's the yeast fermentation. Yeast transforms the malted barley and hops post boil into the beer as we know it. And so the yeast has to be a very high purity. The yeast has to have a very high viability. The yeast has to go through a fermentation timeline that makes the beer taste right. It's not simply add and walk away. The excellent brewer, the excellent beers are from people who understand how to use yeast and match it to different beer styles. Yeast is everywhere. Yeast is a microbe. It's not visible to the naked eye. And so brewers didn't start brewing beer when yeast was discovered. Brewers started beer, brewing beer thousands of years earlier by taking agricultural products such as barley and malting it, later on hops, and then mixing it with the yeast that was in the air. Many, many, many foods and beverages were fermented in ancient times to provide safety, to provide shelf life. That's how beer got its foothold. But people liked the flavor. And one thing brewers did was reuse the yeast. So there's yeast everywhere, but there's only a few select strains within the species of Saccharomyces cerevisiae, ale yeast, that make good beer but it took the brewers from thousands of years ago and then in the more recent times, hundreds of years ago, to start reusing the yeast and reusing it and reusing it. So they were developing techniques to keep the microbiology active, pure, and making the right flavors, selecting the yeast strains in different parts of the world. So they were actually domesticating the various yeast strains without knowing they were doing it. So bakers were doing that, brewers were doing that, uh, winemakers and so on, not as much because it was seasonal. But brewers were constantly making beer and reusing the yeast, developing the techniques of microbiology. So when Louis Pasteur started working on uh, brewer's yeast in the 1860s and showed that yeast was needed for fermentation, that didn't again allow us to make beer, it just allowed us to go, okay, now we know it's yeast, how can we control it better? How can we make beer taste better? And soon after that, yeast was purified first in 1883 in uh, Copenhagen, Denmark at the Carlsberg Brewery by Mill Christian Hansen's lab. For the first time, people were able to use pure cultures, and that has not really changed to today. Brewers around the world use mostly pure cultures to craft excellent beers. 
So the importance of yeast and fermentation in beer is paramount. It is one of the most important things. So first of all, you need the yeast. And so that's what this book is a lot about, how to handle the yeast, how to care for the yeast, how to manage it through the fermentation. So what are some of the things yeast need? Well, they need the carbohydrates. It, the yeast are gonna consume the sugars, but it's not just sugar. In our case in, in beer, it's malted barley simple sugars to complex carbohydrates and yeast turn on different genes to consume those carbohydrates when you turn on those different genes it results in different flavors but yeast also need other things they need oxygen during beer fermentation we try to keep oxygen away from the beer because oxygen is damaging oxidation makes beer taste bad but yeast at the beginning need oxygen so this book explains how much oxygen to give the yeast because 2 ppm versus 5 ppm versus 10 ppm gives you a different beer, gives you a different attenuation. So it's really critical for the brewers to put in the correct amount of oxygen. That is not just turning on a valve on an oxygen tank, but to make the best beer, you want to know exactly how much oxygen you're putting in that wort. And furthermore, it depends how much oxygen dissolves, goes from a gas to a liquid. So just putting the gas through, some of it might not dissolve. They also need nutrients. They need nitrogen, they need amino, uh, which is amino acids, they need phosphorus, they need zinc, they need uh, various amounts of minerals and nutrients. Because just as the human diet is composed of more things than sugar, so is the yeast diet. Because on a cellular basis, yeast and human cells are fairly similar. The biochemistry is very, very similar. We also uh, need to ferment them in certain ways. Sometimes there's square fermenters, sometimes there's open fermenters, sometimes there's uh, conical tanks, which is most common today. Sometimes there's plastic, you know, uh, sometimes there's stainless steel. So those will all have an impact on the fermentation. And then we want to control the parameters around the fermentation. We want to control the temperature. Temperature is so key because it's a living cell. Just like humans are affected by temperature, so are yeast cells. To a higher degree, because a yeast cell is, exists in nature by itself. No skin, no tissues, all right? So temperature is a vast, vast, vast effect on a yeast. Uh, you know, 15C to 20C to 25C is completely different for a yeast cell. And then we want to monitor that fermentation. You don't want to just pitch the yeast and walk away and go, okay, is it done later on? Right? This is where commercial brewing gets really critical about looking at the gravity in 24 hours, looking at the gravity in 48 hours, 72, what's the final gravity? So you want to, you want to look at the Plato drop versus time, extremely important. You want to know how that yeast is fermenting. Uh, and then in big breweries, that's done in line, that's done uh, all sorts of different ways. But in small breweries and home brewing, it's taking a sample. Thank you for picking up a copy of this book. We enjoyed writing it. We love yeast and fermentation. We hope you enjoy reading this book and it allows you to make the best beer possible.